Hey there, brave adventurers! This is the Foxy Bard, here to regale you with tales of both wonder and woe. So pour some ale and grab a seat by the fire as we dig into more stories of role-playing! Today's story is one of my own exploits, and one of my own personal favorite experiences playing role-playing games. I felt that it was only fair to share one of my own before delving into the depths of legend for tales of the deeds of others. Today is a bit of a glory story, more than anything else, but I feel like those stories don't get told nearly often enough. We'll get to the horror stories eventually, dear adventurers, don't you worry. This is the tale of how through some hilarious circumstances, some remarkably perfect roles, and the brilliant memory of the DM, my little half-elf wizard accidentally found herself being crowned as the Queen of the Fae. Some backstory. This was a Pathfinder first edition campaign using the Kingmaker Adventure Path module, so some spoilers for that might come up. This campaign was almost 10 years ago, so remembering everything is a pretty big ask, and I'm almost positive that the DM was taking some license with the module. Even though I don't play with this group anymore, this was one of the most positive DMing experiences I've ever had. The cast. Names changed, of course. Jax, an elf druid and full support caster. Norn. Jax's bird animal companion and death machine. Gus, a sylph ranger and ruler of the kingdom. Jess, a human fighter and total icon. Me, a half-elf wizard and surprise queen. And the DM, the DM and real hero of this story. This story starts pretty early into the module. So the party had met and befriended a strange woman who lived in a swamp and was mildly crazy, but overall rather nice and helpful. We'd gone to see her several times for some advice about all the weird fae stuff going on in our burgeoning kingdom. One of these times when we arrived, she was acting... weird. Not like herself. Suddenly, she springs into action and starts attacking us! Now, she was a decent spellcaster, but only barely stronger than I was at the time, so she obviously didn't even stand close to a chance against us. That is, until she started throwing magic that was MUCH more powerful than anything she should be able to do. It didn't take a genius to work out that she'd been possessed. All the martial characters are struggling to hit, because they were taking penalties to make sure their attacks were non-lethal. Nobody wanted to kill this obviously possessed woman. I'm throwing out control spells like crazy, which I had a lot of, but she's making her save on every single one. I have exactly one spell slot left, and after that, all I can do is throw 1d3 plus 1 damage acid splashes that were lethal, so I have to give it a shot. I cast the spell Unnatural Lust. I had mostly taken it as a joke at first, but it had proven to be an insanely good control spell in reality. For those unfamiliar with the spell, if the target fails a will save, they have to run toward a designated target and attempt to kiss that target during their next turn. The odds of this spell working were basically zero, or rather, the 5% of the DM rolling a nat 1 on the save. And it was all I had left, so I had to try. I designated myself as the target as I was the furthest away and had the most allies along the path to get attacks of opportunity. She failed. On her turn, the old woman stopped trying to do anything except rush toward me in a blind lust. This caused her to move in a line directly through the threatened spaces of all of the martial characters. And Norn, who was basically a buzzsaw, provoking attacks of opportunity from all of them. Between Jess, Gus, and Norn, this poor old woman was bludgeoned into unconsciousness, severing the connection to whoever had possessed her. When she recovered, 
she had no memory of any of it, and we all hoped it wasn't something bad, as we had more pressing things to worry about. Like the advancing army from another kingdom. That's a story for another time, and another moment of glory from that campaign. But we'll just say that the army didn't end up being the threat. Fast forward to much, much later. Near the end of the module, we were transported to the Fey Realm to confront them, as they'd been causing chaos and problems for the entire campaign. We were strong enough now that we could easily take care of ourselves, perhaps even win an audience with the King and Queen, which, after a bit of fun Fey shenanigans, we did. The King listened to our story and considered our request. Not wanting to grant it immediately, he told us that should we come on a hunting trip with him, we could have more time to make our case. He hadn't completely ruled us all out yet. Gus was the ruler of our little kingdom, and as such was doing most of the talking. My being a half-elf, however, helped him to do that quite well. I could influence the people around me to be more persuasive and charming just by existing. I made you better at diplomacy by being pretty, essentially. That's how we've gotten this far. Gus's keen words and my natural charm. As the meeting was dismissed and we were leaving, the Queen intercepted us and said she wanted to meet privately, so we agreed. Do not say no when the Queen of the Fae asks you to do something. It was only then that she revealed that she'd been watching us for a long, long time. Especially me. My half-elf girl was turning into quite the powerful wizard and delusionist, and, as she put it, was the only mortal to ever successfully use magic on her. Wait, what? It was only then that she revealed it had been her who had possessed the old woman all those months ago. The sheer unlikelihood of her failing that save was overwhelming. She'd never failed something like that before, and it caused her character to start paying attention to me in particular. As it also turned out, the spell being one in a million, one in twenty, but who's counting, gave it a degree of permanence. Not the desire to kiss me, not directly, but a lasting infatuation. She, over the course of the months after observing us, and me in particular, had fallen in love with me. I was a bit in shock. This is where I really have to give the DM so much credit. To take something like that minor moment and one-off encounter and turn it into something that all comes together in the finale of the campaign was incredible. I can only strive to ever pull off something that good in my own games. So the Queen tells us that if we really want to end the threat to our kingdom, we need to assassinate the King. And his pet Jabberwock. I believe we were 13th or 14th level at this point, so even a lesser Jabberwock is insanely out of our pay grade, usually, but... Jess had picked up a Vorpal Sword a few levels back, which gave us odds in our favor. Armed with our newfound knowledge and the blessing of the Queen, we set off on the hunting trip to assassinate the King. Luckily, he went down pretty easy. I don't even remember much of the fight, just that we obliterated him in a round or two. But that was just the warm-up. For those of you unfamiliar, Jabberwocky are some of the most fearsome creatures you can fight in all of Pathfinder. Even a lesser one was CR-20 and has a scope of attacks and special abilities that would turn most parties into pudding. Needless to say, this fight was going to be intense. The hero ended up being Jess with her Vorpal Sword, but we all did our very best. Gus with his crazy buzzsaw of arrows, Jax with a flurry of support and buffing spells, Norn with always being able to provide flanking, and even me having used Form of the Dragon to fly up and throw my control and illusion magic from in the air. We eventually brought it down in an epic encounter to end what had been a hell of a campaign. 
When we return to the palace, the queen greets us as heroes. Word of the king's death had spread fast, and we were given safe passage back to our realm. All except for me. For, you see, that had been the last piece of the queen's plan. I was offered the chance to stay with her and become queen at her side. Two queens of the Fae. Without even a second of hesitation, I said yes, and my half-elf girl took her place on the throne. When someone asks you if you want to be queen of the Fae, you say yes. And I did. Whew, that is a doozy of a first story for the channel. Thanks for sticking with me, brave adventurers, and I hope this tale inspired you. Please let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'd also love you so, so, so much if you'd feed the algorithm monster with a like or a subscribe so we can help the channel reach more viewers. Until then, let's douse the fire and get back to our own adventures. Thank you.